Yo, what is up, guys? Beautiful people, we we are back once again. Vicky Melody here with another amazing video. And uh, initially, I started this video yesterday, and as I was uh, messing around with my lead guitar, and I was trying to learn the lead guitar because I'm a bass, I'm a bass player and a keyboard player. Then I was just trying to mess around. But then I recorded this video yesterday, and my microphone wasn't connecting, and I didn't know. So I just went to the house to edit the video and post it up. Then I found out. So I had to come back today to make the same video once again. So I hope I could explain as much as I explained yesterday. Because doing a new video that you've done before is kind of... And there's something I observed. Like about 60-something percent of the people who watch these videos are not subscribed to the channel. So it's unfair that you just watch and go. Just click the subscribe button. It doesn't hurt. It's for free like the videos too because it helps push the video to more audience and it helps the channel to grow and there's another thing before before we continue to this system most of most people that watch youtube especially this generation we are just too fast we want to do things too fast we want to get money too fast we want to watch videos too fast that's why you, you end up skipping videos like most times when you see a channel that is especially tutorial channels Try as much as you can to watch the videos because there, there are stuff that someone might say in between the lines that will change and um, give you a new idea. So skipping stuff just to guess watch videos too fast is kind of a wrong approach. So back to the studio. Now, so now, um, a lot of you guys, some of you have asked me on Instagram to drop, drop my vocal chain. And um, I'm just going to show you what I, I use recently. Uh, um, sometimes it's not always like this. It changes uh the vocal chain of uh, but this is like what i do now nowadays and it's like a professional approach to your um vocal chain so the first thing you do um is gain staging like recording at the right volume so i think i have i have a video on the card here where i said um i gave you tips on how to record clean vocals do well to watch the videos too and the link will be on the description um the first thing is gain staging recording at the right volume i i said you should not record loud because when you record so loud you you are risking your vocals to get um digital clipping and it's it's very very wrong so some of you some of the guys i work for of course most of you guys on the channel send me your your vocals for mixing and mastering and uh, sometimes i i'll tell you guys to record low don't record so loud so there was this guy from the u.s that recorded stuff and i told him that it wasn't good enough so he had to record again now with a lower volume and it gave me more opportunity to make the vocal sound better so the first thing you do record right so you have high chances of getting a good vocal mix you understand so and um i'm using cubase 12 now someone on the on the channel commented on my last video about cubase 12 so i had to go get it so i'm using cubase 12 and um, this supervision um, plugin they added from cubase 11 is a good um, stuff i put it on my on my stereo in like what where when my sound is coming in from my sound card it, it gets to this um supervision first and this supervision is a meter that shows a lot but at this point i'm using it to check levels like the true peak level understand it has a lot of a lot of um a lot of meters here there and there but but then i don't want to get into the plugin so i'm using it for to check my loudness and the, a healthy loudness for recording as an input is around minus 20 to minus 15 between this line that's where um it's healthy enough to capture good vocals you understand so as you can see the supervision plugin is is showing us that there is a um a, 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 um, a signal coming into this supervision but then this is minus 70 the ear cannot even hear minus 50 sometimes we can the ear can never hear minus 40 so this is in an inaudible range my sound my sound card is off but then i think this is um, an electric signal coming through so it, it has frequencies too and it can it can be converted to sound so but that's just by the way so i use this to check my input so the next thing i do after i've recorded sometimes sometimes depending on sometimes i might just add compression in my vocal board as in in my input as is recording the sound is hitting a slight compressor before coming into um into the system uh, but then 
uh, some, most of the time I don't do it, but uh, what I do is um, I use um, a surgical EQ. That's the second thing I do. We call it surgical EQ, like to take down mostly is a reductive EQ to take down parts of um, the vocals that aren't sounding right. And uh, most times you see us doing the low cut around 100 to take off all the low frequencies. And uh, most times you see um, surgical EQs like this, like going and taking down some parts. Mostly there are some frequencies between 160 and um, 400, 500, depending on the vocal. You understand depending on the microphone so there are things you consider there are not just them um, there is no specific number of bad frequency no so that's just uh it's everybody's vocal sounds different i mix for this guy from france and he sounds like bonaboy and then um, the way i approach his vocal is quite different from the way i approach other people's um, vocal and the rest of that so if you're not subscribed, do so now. Like the video, drop a comment. Let me know your own um, vocal chain in case you know, because those comments, as they add up, they make the video, um, um, it helps the video to be shown to other um, people. You understand? So that's the first thing I can do a lot of, like as mostly three or four surgical EQs is, is, is good enough. And most times you don't cut too much because this is a vocal. And when you cut vocals too much, the ear, we hear vocals every day. So the ear has already memorized how a vocal sounds naturally. So that's why we don't overkill or overboost or overcut vocals. So that's just that. So the, after the surgical EQ, the next thing I do is what I call a transient compression. This is not my, my main compression, but I use it to, um, to tame the peaks, the loudest part. And I use a fast attack, fast release, so that once those loudest parts come up, it takes it down and releases the whole so the whole body of the song without being compressed. So it's uh, mo mostly between 1 to 2 dB of gain reduction, but it's something that you will hardly notice just to catch the peaks, you understand. So I use um, the CLA-76. Sometimes I can use the fat filter. The fat filter compressor is, is something that is just too versatile. It has all these modes of compression because now there are different types of compression. Understand? But I think I'll get into that later in uh, maybe in the next compressor I will use. So now coming to the next one. The next one is um, my body compression. I call it body compression. like to compress the whole body now. So and I use them. Um, sometimes I use the CLA-2A and um it's why i use the cla2 is because it's very simple and um it's an opto compressor now there are three types of uh, compressors what am i saying for <laughs> three types of compressors uh, there is um the opto compressor the one that works with light light signal there is um the fet compressor and there is a tube compressor so most times for vocals the opto co um, compressors work the best because of um how transparent they are they don't add any color or any stuff to your vocal so the f the um, the opto compressors and also the fetch compressor because of their fast attack also works well with um vocals but most times it's the opto that gives you the best results for vocals without adding any coloration or saturation to it so i use this guy i understand and if you are using fat filter too where is my fat filter pro c2 the fat filter is a very versatile one of the best compressors you can have is a very versatile issue that you have the, the style the clean you have the classic you have the opto you have you understand the vocal so it, it has different styles of um, compression so that's by the way so now after my compression now the next thing i do is a tonal eq to now shape the tone of the sound the way I want it to be. Since the after the compression, this thing is now sounding unified and up to your face. What I now do is I use um, um this guy, the Skep 76. is an is a Neve um, emulation EQ. Understand from all this board stuff. Uh, so I use it to. to uh, I like the way it sounds. I use it sometimes. I use the Fab Filter Q3. It doesn't matter. Anyone you could use to tone your to shape tone your stuff then the next one i have the next one i have here is my you guys know the vitamin i use vitamin every time vitamin it just works magic on my focus so but i have other saturation plugins there is magneto uh there is magneto from is a stock plugin from cubase uh under distortion you see magneto 
yeah he's a very amazing he's an amazing boy i use him most times for rap vocals yeah that i like the way he makes his aggressive and um, he's more like a tape stuff so that's that's for that so after my after saturating the whole stuff uh what i now do is um and i use a deesa a deesa a common deesa go through the last video i dropped you find out why i use some certain plugins and you know some plugins that um adds latency to your project which are not healthy so i use a deesa to take down the sibilances the s's and the t's so now after that and i add my last eq in case there is something going wrong i use it to do my final equalization so i use it to do my last equalization in case most times i don't tweak anything but even if i would tweak is i'll just keep this eq on and listen to the sound from beginning to end and listen because there, there might be some parts in this in the vocal where something might jump out and there are some parts where it might not jump out so th what i do then is now use dynamic eqing to now cut off only that part when when it's high above a threshold i just use dynamic eq and also um, a last tip before um i the video ends because i didn't want it to get so long if you watch on on this eq this last this is the last um the last plug in here and it's showing us that there is um there are frequency resonance there is something resonating from around to in the whole frequency spectrum and um you can hear it at this moment you cannot even hear it because it's below 70 below the audible range of the human ear but then it is there so where why it is good and it is bad now why is bad is because when you add plugins this this is um caused by um um analog style and um, um vst plugins trying to emulate the um the older like the board the analog stuff and this these signals are caused by electricity passing through the circuit you understand so but then I know that um what is i know the two plugins that cost this thing the wrong thing is if you keep adding analog style um, um plugins on your boss and they keep adding up and adding up they might not be audible then but during mastering they add up and mess up something so that's why even if i will use an, an analog style um vst plugin i use it once then i turn off analog in every other analog um style them um, vsts now keep this by the side i'm bringing the two guys that were causing this thing because i know it was the two analog compressors this guy and this guy so you just watch here as i turn them down you see that they go they go off so this is on the this is the analog section so if i turn it off you see it has reduced i turn this one off it's gone so you see that by adding this by turning this one on and I added another one. Both of them now they now add up to to do something that you will not hear, but in the long run they, they mess up stuff. So be careful with your with the VST your choice of VST plugins and uh, every other thing. So for those who have made it thus far without subscribing, I'm coming to your house right now and you subscribe. <laughs> you must subscribe. So do well to subscribe. Go to the channel you see amazing amazing stuff and in in a short time because a lot of you guys have asked me to drop my vocal mixing template so i'm going to be dropping a vocal mixing template for cubase and for fl studio and it's going to cost just a little dime you understand it's just a template where you just drag in your vocal start recording and they start sounding amazing so look up to that very soon on this channel so vicky melody see you guys next time i'm going to be doing the next the video you guys requested for the ozone mastering please i'm going to do that next so i'll see you guys on the next one